In this video, I'm going to show you my five-step process to turn this piano sketch into this fully orchestrated theme. Step one, compose a theme. <laughs> Easier said than done. A couple of notes on the theme I composed for this video. It's in B flat major and makes use of a one, five, six, four chord progression. The same chord progression that's used in thousands of pop songs. I want to also note the octave leap to start the second half of the theme. This sets us up for a huge soaring moment in the second half of the theme to contrast it with the first, which had used a lot of stepwise motion. Also note the use of the C major chord near the end of the theme. C major doesn't naturally exist in B flat major. This use of a borrowed chord is a great way to get that classic Hollywood sound. Step two, melody. This is where I get into orchestration. In this first step, I'm going to decide which instruments and at what dynamic I'm going to play the melody. I'm going to start with a classic doubling technique, which is going to be horns and celli. In the second half of the theme, I bring in all four horns along with high strings and flutes. The melody is now being played in octaves to give it more strength. Also note that I have moved the melody from celli to violas in the second half of the theme. This is because the range for the second half of the melody is great for soaring violas, but would be a little too high and thin for the celli. A great rule of thumb I like to use for string melodies is that the melody will probably soar if it is mostly taking up the top half of that string section's clef. I also added a glockenspiel in this step to accent the melody after the triplet quarter notes that have flown up the octave. Step three, the bass line and chords. Probably the easiest step, but still important to get right. It's easy because we've already selected the notes that are gonna be played in the piano sketch. I have the double basses, tuba, and bass trombone carrying the bass line. At times I have the bass line in octaves for more strength. This is occurring on the B flat note to ensure to the listener that they know that this is the tonic and to give the tonic a little bit more weight. I have also added the other trombones in this step to fill out the chords in the second half of the theme. Moving forward, I have grayed out the mini notes from the prior steps so that the additional notes from the current step will stand out and so you can see how they were filling out the register. So what I mean by that is that for this step, the notes that you're gonna see in green are going to be the notes that I've added for the bass line, and the notes that are gonna be grayed out is the MIDI notes from the melody from the prior step, and this will continue as we move through the steps. <laughs> Step four, accompaniment. I would recommend sketching out an accompaniment with your piano sketch. I haven't done so for this theme, but improvising an accompaniment can be quite challenging, especially for beginners. I know for me, it was probably, if not definitely, the most difficult thing for me in learning to compose for the orchestra. The idea here for the accompaniment is to give the piece life. What is so amazing and beautiful about orchestral music is its capacity for movement. 
When done well, a good accompaniment section creates that sense of a beautiful blurring of sound. The different sections of the orchestra work together to create a mesmerizing wash of sound. For this reason, the accompaniment is crucial to orchestral music. But unfortunately, it also means that it's easy to turn your piece into a muddy wash of nonsense. The only way to avoid turning your piece into a muddy wash of nonsense is practice. I would say practice and studying other orchestral music that you like. But as far as rules go, the accompaniment is really much more subjective. For this piece, I decided to give the initial accompaniment to violas, harp, and bassoons, filling out chord tones, playing triplet quarter notes. In the second half of the theme, the accompaniment transitions into a counter melody played by celli, male choir, and bassoons. <laughs> Step five, percussion, accents, and fun stuff. Step five, admittedly, is a lot of small steps which come together to make the final step. It's really hard when making music to declare a final step as there is always more revisions to be made, but essentially speaking, this is all of those little things that come together to polish the piece, and at some point you gotta just decide that the piece is done. The first thing I do do in this step pretty routinely is to add percussion. I don't always wait until the final step to add percussion, but a lot of the time I do, because I generally speak prefer to add percussion for the sake of accents and not as much for the sake of rhythm. Although of course, sometimes I will rely on percussion for rhythm, but I really am inspired and got into orchestra music by the likes of film composers like John Williams, who is so great at using the tonal instruments for rhythm and using percussion to accent moments that he wants to accent. And that's something I'm trying to learn. And so for this reason, I tend to try and wait until the end to add percussion to force myself to really create something that's interesting without percussion in it in the first place. Just my opinion not saying at all that this is the right way to go about composing, but for me, this works. I've added a timpani, bass drum, suspended cymbal, piatti, triangle, and tambourine. These are intended to accent certain key moments, but I do use the tambourine and the bass drum for some rhythm. I have also added a celesta, which along with harp is playing some arpeggiated chords to again accent certain key moments in the second half of this theme. The celesta also plays a C major chord to end the piece, giving it a little bit of that sparkle that I think is associated, again, with that Hollywood sound. I have added a few more elements to the piece, all of which are simply doubling other previously composed parts. I fill out the choir with the women on the final chord, and the contrabassoons play the bass line in the second half of the theme to fill out the woodwinds. Without the contrabassoons, the woodwind section felt unbalanced to me. An important rule of thumb that I learned when learning to compose for the orchestra that I really like to follow is that in order to get a balanced, fully orchestrated sound, the individual sections of the orchestra should be balanced themselves. I also have added a few new dynamic markings along with a gradual slowing of the tempo at the end of the piece to accent the feeling of completion. I want to add that there is always more work to be done. And after writing this script and listening back on this piece, there's quite a bit I would like to change. But at a certain point, the piece has to be finished. A completed piece is entirely arbitrary, and sometimes you gotta just call it. So here it is, the final fully orchestrated theme. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you all next time. Take care.